this looks really boring, but it's actually quite interesting. Um, <laughs> So in, in thinking about, OK, what could we do? What's relevant to our existing skill sets? Uh, we, we, we kept an eye on something called the Gartner Hype Cycle. Um, many of you probably know what this is. It's released every year by Gartner, who are a market research company. Um, and uh, it sort of depicts the rise and fall and then the rise again of emerging technologies. So when you're at the bottom of this curve, it's like, oh my god, there's a new technology. It's probably going to change the world. We get to the peak of inflated expectations, and um, in fact, it proves that it's probably at this time not going to change the world, and it slumps right down to the trough of disillusionment. And that is a point where I think the technology catches up with the potential that was seen at the beginning, at the birth of this technology. Um, and we were looking at this um, cycle, and we were looking at stuff that was probably <coughs> heading down, about to hit the trough, and enter the slope of enlightenment. And the two things that we picked, well, the first thing we picked was augmented reality. Um, and the second thing that we thought might have some legs, and this was about three years ago, was virtual reality. Um, and what's interesting, I mean, if, we, if we, we're looking for things that are hitting the plateau of productivity, speech recognition, for example, it, all of us have probably got smartphones. You get them out, you can probably use Siri or whatever the Android version is called. I forget the name, but it's a ridiculous one. Um, so uh, ver augmented reality. We built a team of people who could start creating alongside our, our CG artists, virtual reality experiences. We picked up a brief pretty quickly. Here's an example. This is about three years ago now. So um, we still think that the quality of the asset that we delivered for this Mercedes-Benz execution was pretty good for three years ago. It's using the Vuforia platform. Um, and Mercedes were faced with a bit of an issue. They were releasing a new van called the CTAN. Um, and there was an issue in production. And for the launch event, um, uh, they didn't have enough vehicles to take to the launch event, which meant that they needed something to show all of the press and the dealers that were coming along to um, explore this new vehicle. And they came to us and asked, as we were already creating traditional advertising for them, could we also create an augmented reality application? And we did. And off the back of that, we sort of picked up a number of augmented reality applications for automotive brands and also for a few other strange brands like Bazooka Buds. Um, but augmented reality, it was always a bit faddy. Um, I was doing AR when it was really faddy and really a bit rubbish back sort of five, six years ago, and it was browser-based stuff. Um, and I think clients always had a bit of an issue about um, buying into augmented reality because, one, users needed to download a native application, and that was a bit of a hurdle. It was a barrier to entry. There's always a massive drop-off in terms of engagement when you ask people to download something native. And two, they also had to pub distribute somehow a printed marker, which would trigger the experience. Uh, we're tier one dev partners with Euphoria, who are part of Qualcomm, the, the guys that make chipsets for, for phones and stuff, which means we still get alpha, beta tech to play around with before the rest of the market. Um, and in a recent execution for Lufthansa, uh, we did away with one of those barriers to entry, and that was distributing the marker. Uh, I think this is really interesting. Uh, Really interesting time, um, to be honest. And uh, so, in, in the Lufthansa application, working with a partner agency called Space here in London, um, uh, we offered the users to the chance to define their own marker. So, literally, take a marker pen, draw um, a, a, a image relevant to the campaign on a piece of paper, use their mobile device to take a picture of that image, and that became the marker, the prompt of the content. Um, and it was pretty successful. Uh, but we don't just do augmented reality on a small scale, on an application scale. We do it on a pretty big scale as well. And I, I, I'll let you see this video, which is um, quite an interesting use case of AR, if you can call it such, recently at Waterloo. There's no sound, so I'll have to keep talking over it. Um, basically, we allowed users to come and configure the new Skoda Fabio on iPads um, around uh, experiential stands and then take a seat in front of a green screen. Um, and on the largest digital out-of-home screen in Europe, they saw a live extraction of themselves, chroma key extraction of themselves, and a vehicle build around them. I'm not sure if explicitly you can call it AR or VR, but it's a very, very exciting experience nonetheless.